Alright, I'm gonna say right off the bat, this is a video for PC players, console players, I'm sorry, but there's not really a whole lot of options for you, unless you have older systems available and you can hunt down older copies of previous games. There's very few Sonic games even available on modern platforms, and you don't really have any choices, so there's not really a whole lot to say. What I would say is that if you are a really big Sonic fan, if you're like a super hardcore Sonic fan, I would genuinely recommend maybe looking into getting a gaming PC or a Steam Deck or something, because there is so much incredible stuff in the world of Sonic, thanks to fan projects and the community and things like that. Through ROM hacks and mods and fan games and enhancements, if you limit yourself to just what is put out officially for Sonic, then you're missing out on most of the incredible things that Sonic has to offer. If you really care about Sonic, then I really do think that a PC is a wise investment, because there's so much incredible stuff out there. In fact, there's so much incredible stuff that it is really difficult to sift through and find the good stuff, and it's very easy to miss a lot of things that might not get as much attention, and that is a shame because there's some really cool things out there that people should be playing. And that is precisely why I've made this video, because I have gone and sifted around through everything, and I have found all the good stuff, and I've compiled it all together in one place for you to find the best ways to play every Sonic game. And I'll just cut to the chase right here. In the description of the video, you'll find a link to a spreadsheet that I put together with links to everything that I'm going to be recommending here. All the fan enhancements and remakes and mods and all the resources and tools you're going to need for everything. It's all there. Every single Sonic game is labeled. It's all organized. I even have my load order presented for games where load order is relevant for the mods. I have things separated into different sections, what is essential for absolutely every player, and what is customization that you may or may not want to use depending on your preferences. And it doesn't just count main games, it's got spin-offs and everything included as well. There are a couple of games that you're not going to see on this list or see in this video, and if that's the case, that's because there's nothing really for that specific game to enhance it, you're just going to have to play the base game the way it is. And I'm going to do the best I can to keep this spreadsheet updated, because things like this are always changing in the Sonic community. In fact, I know a couple of things are in the process of changing now that are probably going to come out in the near future. So I'll try to stay on top of that, but at the time of making this video at least, I've went through everything thoroughly, and I've updated it as much as I possibly can. And uh, if anything ends up changing, or new things come out, and it's not on this list that you think should be, hit me up on uh, Twitter, or in the comments of this video, or whatever, and I will see about adding what I can to keep this updated. I hope y'all like it. There was a lot of time and a lot of work to put this together, and I'm hoping it turns into a very valuable resource for the Sonic community. If you end up liking it and using it, then uh, please do share it around with as many people as you can. I want this to spread around and inform people about all the great ways that they can play Sonic games. Uh, but now with that out of the way, let's get a little bit more into detail and talk about what is available and what's out there and why I think you should check it out. Starting, of course, with Sonic 1, I highly recommend you check out Sonic Forever. Now, this is a really, really cool project. So, there was the remake for the original Sonic games done on mobile by Christian Whitehead and Stealth a while ago, and those eventually are what led to Sonic Mania and everything, and those versions of the games were what were incorporated into Sonic Origins with a couple of upgrades, but in my, and many people's opinion, Origins falls short of what would be truly ideal for a classic Sonic package. However, fans have created versions of these games that are much more definitive, in my opinion, and I highly recommend playing them. Fans managed to create decompilations of those Sonic games running on the Retro Engine, which is basically a homebrewed PC port. And then some other fans took that decompilation and turned it here into Sonic Forever, which is such a fantastic version of Sonic 1. It has a million options that you can toggle on and off, enhancements to the various games and things that you can tweak to your liking. You can give Sonic all of his abilities from the future games, peel out, insta-shield, drop dash. You can remove the roll lock, you can remove the spike glitch, you can add seven Chaos Emeralds and Super Sonic, you can add elemental shields, you have Tails, Knuckles, and Amy as playable characters, Amy having two custom move sets made for forever, which is very cool. You can customize some of the visual aspects of the game, restore some beta elements, change, like, running animations and things like that. 
There are so many wonderful features in Sonic Forever. It also has an incredibly good time attack mode that cuts out the boss fights and has a one-button restart if you're into that kind of thing. It adds a save feature akin to what you see in Sonic 3 & Knuckles. It is perfect. It is absolutely the ideal way to play Sonic 1. And on top of that, it also has mod support, and there's a bunch of mods for the game. But if you just want the core Sonic 1 experience as well as possible, Forever is really all you need. And if you're not a fan of all these enhancements, you can turn all of them off and get an experience very akin to the original game, if that's what you really want. Stuff like this is the reason I'm making this video, because there are so many incredible fan projects just like this to check out, including one by the exact same team for Sonic 2, Sonic 2 Absolute, which is basically the exact same kind of project, but for Sonic 2. It has a lot of the same enhancements and options available and everything. Doesn't, as of yet, have its own custom playable Amy. I don't know if the devs are going to be adding that eventually. Maybe? I don't know. But even without that, Sonic 2 Absolute is just as good of a version of Sonic 2 as Forever is for Sonic 1. The only thing about Absolute is that currently Hidden Palace was removed from this version of the game for whatever reason, but you can re-implement that easily with mods, and I have links to that in the spreadsheet and everything, so yeah, Absolute is certainly the way to go. And wouldn't you know it, Sonic 3 & Knuckles has a similar project as well, though this one is a little bit different as this is not built off of a decompilation of a retro engine remake of Sonic 3 & Knuckles. This is actually built off of the original Genesis game. Fortunately, Sonic 3 & Knuckles was already the most refined and most polished of the original games, so that's not really too much of a problem. Occasionally you might run into a small little physics bug or whatever, but uh, overall it's pretty much on par with the other projects. In fact, you could argue that this is actually the best of these projects, as it's the oldest, it's had the most time to develop and add features. But also with Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you know, it's two games put together, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, and each version of the game has things that are not in other versions. Well, Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited, or Sonic 3 Air as it's called, it has options to allow you to customize the game to your liking, so you can make it like Sonic 3 with all the original Sonic 3 music, make it like Sonic & Knuckles, make it like a mixture of the two, make it like Sonic 3 & Knuckles, and you can select each individual thing to make it to your preference. It is a fantastic project. And this game has so many mods for it to enhance the experience even further and make it even better. Even more customization options, even more fixes and enhancements and tweaks, and even features from Sonic Origins as well can be imported into Sonic 3 Air through a lot of mods. Uh, there's also Sonic 3 Complete, which is a ROM hack of Sonic 3 & Knuckles that has a lot of similar improvements, and some people prefer Sonic 3 Complete over Air. But to those people, I would say almost all of the features from Complete can be added to Air with mods, and I have links to a bunch of those in the spreadsheet as well. So really, Air is the absolute definitive Sonic 3 & Knuckles experience for sure. And as far as CD is concerned, a lot of people often recommend checking out Sonic CD Restored, and that is definitely a very cool project, but CD Restored is very different than these other fan-enhanced versions of the other Sonic games. This is really built primarily for speedrunners, and I don't necessarily think it's the ideal way to play Sonic CD for most people. I would instead recommend checking out Sonic CD Miracle Edition, which is a similar project to Forever and Absolute and Air. It adds all kinds of options and toggleable features to customize the Sonic CD experience to be exactly what you would want. And it also has a bunch of other cool features in it, like the namesake Miracle Edition comes from Miracle Sonic, which is a new added thing kind of being a Super Sonic equivalent for Sonic CD, but using the Time Stones. And I know at first you're like, what, so it's just a pink Super Sonic? And yes, it is. But also, if you charge a peel out for long enough with Miracle Sonic, then you can time travel on the spot, which is pretty cool. Makes sense. It's a transformation using the Time Stones. And I like this kind of thing of like the whole fan community kind of coming together. Someone made this concept of Miracle Sonic and it caught on and people liked it. And now it's available in the game. It's really, really cool. Also, worth noting with Miracle Edition, if you have Sonic Origins, then you can use that version of Sonic CD to build the decompilation to get this running. And then you get Knuckles and Amy playable in Sonic CD. However, you are going to have to manually build the decompilation yourself instead of using the easy route. 
And that can be quite an involved and complicated process. I've included a tutorial video in the spreadsheet for people to kind of walk you through it. But uh, it is quite a process, and to be honest, I couldn't even be bothered to go through it. So I don't have Knuckles and Amy. I don't really personally find it to be that big of an issue, but if you really want the absolute definitive Sonic CD experience, you do have to jump through some hoops, just letting you know ahead of time. Now, jumping up to the 3D games, of course we gotta talk about Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Adventure, the PC port of the game available for Steam is quite bad, but we can remedy that. To this day, I still see people getting recommended Better SADX, and I gotta come here and say, do not use Better SADX, that is so outdated at this point. What you wanna do is you wanna use PKR's Mod Installer, and that will convert the Steam version of Sonic Adventure DX into the older PC port, which is better, and then that will turn into the new Mod Manager, which is much better than the older one. And that comes preloaded with a bunch of fantastic mods that you want to be using, including the Dreamcast Conversion mod, if you prefer the look of the Dreamcast version of the game. And there are also lots of great mods available for Sonic Adventure to make it even better. One thing built into the mod loader is Super Sonic, playable in the normal levels, which was originally supposed to be in Sonic Adventure, but they had to cut it out last minute. You can restore the old beta character models and the old beta version of Windy Valley, which is a really fun level. It's honestly better than anything in the final game. I recommend checking it out as well as many, many, many other cool additions. Like I said, as always, it's all gonna be in the spreadsheet, so please do check it out. Uh, same is true for Sonic Adventure 2. Nothing nearly as complicated for this game. It just has a mod manager. I think eventually the SA1 mod manager is gonna become able to work for SA2 as well. But as of the time of making this video, SA2 has its own mod manager, and there are tons and tons and tons of mods to improve this game as well. Like, for example, separating all of the speed character's actions onto different buttons so you no longer accidentally kill yourself when trying to use the light speed dash and you can get access to instant spin dashes like in SA1. Once again, you can have Super Sonic and Super Shadow playable in normal levels. You can have all the multiplayer characters playable in single player, which is very fun. You can switch the treasure hunting radar to work more like how it did in Sonic Adventure 1 if you would prefer. And again, so, so, so many options, as well as many fixes and improvements. I should also mention that a lot of these games have retranslation mods available. If you want to use the Japanese voices, then there is a more authentic subtitle version available. And oftentimes, for a lot of games that don't have Japanese voices available at all, there are usually mods or undubs or things like that that you can apply to games if you prefer to use the original Japanese. There are just so many fantastic options for these games. Now, going on to Sonic Heroes, this one is a little bit strange. There is a PC version of Sonic Heroes available, an old one that actually came on a disc. Uh, and that one's similar to the other games, you can update that, and it's got a mod manager and a bunch of cool mods available that improve the game in a lot of ways, but personally, I am not a fan of the PC version of Sonic Heroes, as there are a number of things about the game that are straight up broken that actually affect the gameplay that have yet to be fixed with mods. There are some things like automated scripted loops that can just straight up kill you in the PC version because they don't work correctly, so, personally, I find those kinds of things a bit too unacceptable, so I prefer to just play the GameCube version emulated on Dolphin, which obviously through emulation you can get higher frame rates and better performance, widescreen, higher resolution. Obviously, you don't get all of the wonderful mods available for the PC version, but personally, I don't think a lot of those are that spectacular, and I prefer having the stability of the game working the way it's supposed to, but, uh... I have options available for both in the spreadsheet based on whatever you want to use, so go crazy. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. This is another game played on Dolphin through emulation, but for this game we are going to be using the mod Shadow Reloaded, which is a really big modification for the game that changes a lot and improves the game in many ways. It uh, refines the controls a little bit, makes it feel a bit better. It also makes a lot of the missions less strict, so that way they're not nearly as much of a headache to go through and it changes the game so you don't have to play through it a thousand times to get access to the last story. I think you only need to beat it like three times. Uh, and it seems like a really good version of the game. Some people might find that it alters the original experience a bit too much. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't fully played through Shadow Reloaded yet, but what I have checked out so far has all been for the better. So definitely worth at least looking at. Now, for Sonic 06, I'm sure everyone saw this coming. If you want to play this game, don't even bother with the original game. Just go to the fan remake of it, Project 06. This is a phenomenal project right here. 
It has all the main levels from the original game with all the playable characters, but everything is just improved astronomically. All the characters play so much better, the physics are better, it's way less glitchy, the game is faster, it's more fun, the characters have new moves and new abilities, the design is smoothed over. This enhancement of the original game is absolutely ridiculous. It takes one of the worst, most broken, most terrible Sonic games ever made and puts it up there with some of the best of them, in my opinion. It is really freaking fun. And I would personally say that there is really no reason to play Base 06 anymore. Just play Project 06. Don't even bother. However, I do know that there are going to be people that still want to check out the original 06, as Project 06 is only a sliver of the game. It's missing so much of the 06 experience. Doesn't have the story, doesn't have the hub worlds and the side missions and all that stuff. So if you really want the full Sonic 06 experience, then I would recommend playing the game on emulation through Xenia, an Xbox 360 emulator, and also checking out Legacy of Solaris, a similar mod to Shadow Reloaded that overhauls the game and fixes it up substantially. It obviously can't do as much as Project 06, being that that is a full ground-up remake, but it does do quite a bit to make Sonic 06 a much more enjoyable experience. And as a bonus, with playing through emulation on PC, the load times are dramatically cut down, so just that makes 06 a lot better. Legacy of Solaris also has a lot of brand new content added to it as well. Character stories for all the side characters, some new levels, some new layouts, a new extra hard mode that you can check out with all custom layouts for everything. There is a lot of content in Legacy of Solaris. It's a very impressive project. So if you absolutely insist on playing Sonic 06, then I would say Legacy of Solaris is the version to play. Now, with Sonic Unleashed, this is very exciting, because for a very long time there was just no really good way to play Sonic Unleashed. It never had a PC version, it was only available on console. And the console versions of Unleashed ran terribly, and there were so many problems that you just couldn't do anything about. And for the longest time, emulating the game wasn't really possible, and then eventually they released the game on Xbox Series X, and it finally had a decent frame rate and everything, which was nice. But nowadays, Sonic Unleashed is playable on the latest Canary build of Xenia if you use the Vulcan API, and with that, you can play through Sonic Unleashed pretty much in its entirety with very few problems. There'll be occasional graphical issues that you'll run into here and there, uh, but there are some settings that you can tweak that I have in the spreadsheet that will minimize the amount of these problems and help you get through a lot of it. And then you can play Sonic Unleashed on PC, and it's a wonderful experience, but you can enhance it even further with some mods to make the game even better. Probably the biggest ones that I would highlight is a much better XP balancing where you don't have to grind forever anymore to get a max level character. That is certainly very nice. And the big one, removing the metal requirements for the game, meaning you no longer have to scour around everywhere hunting for metals all the time and ruining the pacing. Now you can just play through the game and you don't have to worry about it, and that is so nice. Uh, one word of warning though, Sonic Unleashed, some aspects of the game are tied to the frame rate of the game, so certain things break if you try to tune the frame rate too high. I'd recommend just going to 60 FPS and don't go above that, because if you do, some things are gonna break and you probably won't be able to finish the game. And uh, for those of you that don't have a PC powerful enough to emulate Sonic Unleashed, then I have an alternative recommendation for you. The Unleashed Project, a series of mods for Sonic Generations to basically turn it into Sonic Unleashed. And this project has come a long way since when it first came out, because you look at footage of it and you can barely even tell that this is Sonic Generations. It looks almost identical, but I assure you this is in fact Generations and not Unleashed. Through this method, all you get is the daytime levels, but let's all be honest, that's all you want to play of Unleashed anyway, so that's not really a problem. And there are mods available for all the DLC packs for Unleashed as well, so you can play pretty much all the daytime levels, which is excellent. Of course, it's still not one-to-one -one exactly the same as Unleashed. I personally prefer to play the original game, but this is a fantastic alternative for people who can't. Uh, next, going on to Sonic Colors, we have Sonic Colors DX. Now, there is Sonic Colors Ultimate, but that is a very bad version of the game, and I would not recommend it. I would recommend DX, however, because it is an excellent version of the game. DX is an emulated version of the original Wii Sonic Colors, but it uses a modified version of Dolphin that has some extra features, and it changes a lot about the original game. 
mostly for graphical enhancements, you know, better lighting, HD textures, HD UI for everything. Personally, I'm not a fan of the lighting changes made. I think that the game looked perfectly fine the way it was originally, but you can disable that if you want. I also don't really like the model they use for Sonic in this, but again, you can uh, disable that, and I have instructions how to in the spreadsheet. Uh, but overall, this is a really good project that I absolutely recommend. One really cool feature of DX that I want to highlight is that if you want, you can rearrange the levels to be in their originally intended order. This is something a lot of people don't know about colors. At some point in development, they rearranged the levels and padded out the game by taking a bunch of what was probably originally going to be side missions and turning them into extra acts that were not supposed to be mandatory levels. Uh, and that's why Sonic Colors has like five or six acts per zone. Originally, the game was just going to have two acts per zone, like most Sonic games before this change. And with Colors DX, you can restore the original level order and even remove all the smaller side acts if you want and get an experience much more true to what it was originally going to be. And let me tell you, it is vastly improved that way. If you're one of those people that doesn't like Sonic Colors, I recommend checking out DX and turning on that option and seeing what you think of it, because it really does improve the pacing of the game quite a bit. Uh, now we come to Generations, and I have to say, there's actually not that much for this game that is necessary to get the ideal experience beyond just the base game available on Steam. Because Generations is already one of the nicest, most polished Sonic games out there, so it doesn't really have a lot of problems that need fixing. There are a couple of mods I recommend for better performance, and a couple of very minor bug fixes, but really that's it. There are a lot of mods available for Sonic Generations, but they're mostly, you know, extra levels, extra playable characters, and like, totally changing up the game into a new experience. But here I'm just focusing on enhancing the core game, and there's really not that much that Generations needs, but still, there's some stuff out there if you want to check it out. Uh, for Lost World, there's not a whole lot available for this game either. There is an improvement mod that uh, changes up the physics and removes some of the more frustrating aspects of Lost World, like having to grind up for animals to progress through the game, which is nice. Uh, but outside of that, the only other big thing I would recommend is the DLC Restore, which is really, really cool. It takes the Wii U exclusive uh, Yoshi and Zelda levels and adds them to the PC version, which is awesome. Uh, and, uh, yes, pretty much it for Lost World. On to Mania, and as you would expect, there's a number of good things available for Mania. There's a lot of mods for this. Uh, but there's also a decompilation for Mania, as it does run on the same engine as all the original Sonic games, their mobile recreations. So it has a decompilation available as well, though once again, you're gonna have to manually build the decompilation of Mania yourself, and it's quite a process, and personally, I couldn't be bothered to go through that. But fortunately, there's also a mod manager for just normal, good old-fashioned Sonic Mania, and there's a number of good mods available out there, so uh, check it out. Whether you want to play the decompilation or not, I got your back. It's all in the spreadsheet. Similar to Generations, Mania doesn't really have many problems, so there's not a ton of stuff I would recommend for just enhancing the base experience, but... You can give Sonic all of his abilities all available at once. You can uh, give Mighty his wall jump from Knuckles Chaotix, which is cool. You can fix Knuckles gliding to function like how it does in the other games. Uh, you can also give Super Sonic some better sprites. You know, just little nice things here and there, but nothing too important. Uh, for forces, there's not a ton for this game that I would recommend. Just a couple of small little things here and there, like removing the auto-scrollers from that one level and uh, adding some cut dialogue back into the game to try to make the game story a bit better. Uh, the only major mod for forces that I would recommend that I think is very cool is the Classic Sonic Improvement mod, which adjusts the physics of Classic Sonic uh, changes the level design of the classic levels quite substantially, and also adds Chaos Zero as a new boss fight to the game. And it's really, really cool. I'm very impressed with the quality of this mod. It's really good. Uh, but when it comes to Frontiers, now Frontiers, let me tell ya, this is perhaps one of the most improved Sonic games with mods due to what is out there. You can fix almost all of Frontier's biggest problems through mods. It's pretty incredible, honestly. In fact, a lot of it comes built right into the mod manager. I should mention the Hedge Mod Manager, which is a universal mod manager for all of the Hedgehog Engine Sonic games available on PC. So Generations, Lost World, Forces, Frontiers, and I think Origins as well all share one mod loader, which is very cool. And built into the mod loader is a lot of patches and tweaks you can make to the games, in addition to also being able to load mods through it. And Frontiers has 
so many amazing tweaks that just fix so many problems that should not have been there in the first place in the base game. And then you throw mods on top of that to make an even better experience, and it's incredible. You can uh, switch characters whenever you want in the open zone, including in the base story. You can transform into Supersonic whenever you want in the open zone. You can uh, adjust the parry so it's not infinite like it is in the base game. In fact, there's a lot of, like, combat overhaul mods available for Frontiers that, personally, I'm not really impressed by a lot of them, but uh, they're available if you want to check them out. Similarly, there's a lot of physics mods for Frontiers that I personally don't really care for, but they're out there. But uh, the definitive Sonic Frontiers mod that I would recommend is Island Tweaker. It is so cool. First of all, it fixes the draw distance of the game, which is amazing. But then on top of that, you can overhaul the open zone and make it so much better. You can remove all the camera volumes and all the scripting. You can remove all the dash panels from it as well and all the 2D sections. So you just get to play the game freely and openly like it probably should have been when the game first came out. You can also remove a lot of those annoying pace-breaking cutscenes in Frontiers when you run into the Guardians or whenever you finish a puzzle and the game always has to stop and show you the thing and it's like, can I just play the game? Well, now you can, and it is wonderful. It improves the experience of Frontiers dramatically. I cannot recommend these mods enough. Uh, and as far as Superstars goes, at the time of making this video, Superstars is still relatively new, so it's early days as far as modding is concerned. There's not a lot available that I would recommend. Uh, but one thing you can do is you can fix the spin dash at frame rates above 60 FPS, which is nice. And again, a couple of nice little tweaks and improvements here and there. Uh, one that I quite like is the camera zoom mod, which lets you uh, control the FOV, giving you a wider view, which uh, is certainly very nice, because I do feel that Superstars is maybe just a bit too zoomed in. So that's very nice, uh, and I look forward to seeing the future of Superstars mods, because I think this game has a lot of potential for lots of good improvements and enhancements that it can have. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I'll add anything to the spreadsheet that I end up finding that's really cool. Uh, so that's it for all, like, the main major Sonic games that people actually care about, but I also want to talk about, you know, side games and spin-offs as well. I want this to be as complete as it possibly can, so let's get into some of those real quick. Uh, Sonic 3D Blast, I recommend checking out the Director's Cut, a ROM hack for the game made by John Burton, the lead developer on the original game, and it has a lot of nice, uh, gameplay improvements and additions to Sonic 3D Blast that makes it quite a bit better. Of course, there is also the Saturn version of 3D Blast that has different music and sound effects and enhanced visuals, but I think the gameplay improvements of Director's Cut absolutely trumps this version of the game. Though I did find a cool ROM hack for uh, the Saturn version that turns it into just the special stages, as the Saturn version has totally different special stages that are kind of the Sonic 2 halfpipe type thing. And these are pretty cool, they're pretty fun, so if you want the complete 3D Blast experience, then uh, you can check out the Saturn Special Stages with this hack. Uh, going on to the 8-bit Sonic games, for Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, I highly recommend checking out the SMS remakes of these games. These are kind of like the Project 06 for these two games, ground-up remakes that have tons of enhancements available for these games, including additional playable characters, Super Sonic, abilities, uh, extra levels added to the game. These are really, really cool. They are fairly changed from the original games, but having played both versions, I think that they are similar enough that you're really still overall getting the core experience of these games. It's kind of just bigger and better. Uh, the second game is more changed than the first one is, but I still think it's similar enough that you still get the full experience out of it, so I wouldn't really say it's necessary to go back to the original games. Uh, as for the other 8-bit Sonic games, if you want to play those, then you're gonna have to use emulation, and I would recommend if you're going to play Sonic Chaos, Triple Trouble, and Blast, then your best bet is playing the Master System versions of those games. They're a little bit janky in the case of Chaos and Blast, but uh, I think they are overall the better experience that you're going to get due to the wider field of view, which lets you see more, makes the game more playable. Uh, Triple Trouble, you might be saying, well, what about the Triple Trouble 16-bit remake? And that is absolutely a very cool project, but it is a completely different game than the original Triple Trouble. It does not at all provide you the authentic Triple Trouble experience. It's its own thing. So if you want to play the true Sonic Triple Trouble, then I would recommend checking out the fan-made Master System port of that, so you get that same uh, higher FOV and everything. 
Uh, what else we got? Uh, spin ball. Yeah, even this has an enhanced version. Uh, it modifies the physics a little bit, makes the game a little bit more forgiving, and it's definitely a better experience than the original. If you wanted to play Sonic Spinball, I would recommend playing this. Uh, mean Bean Machine also has a similar ROM hack that improves it a little bit, mainly just aesthetic things, changing the dialogue, making it so that you're playing as actually Sonic in the game, and, you know, small little things like that. Not uh, necessary or anything, but if you're gonna play Mean Bean Machine, I guess why not? Uh, for Sonic R, similar to Sonic Heroes, this had an old PC version on a disc, and if you have that, then you can use the Sonic R updater to get it to run on modern computers, and then you no longer need the disc, you can just run it from your computer directly. And this comes with a mod loader, and it's got a couple of mods available to uh, improve the game here and there, fix a couple of problems. Uh, the biggest thing it offers is the ability to restore the original Saturn effects that did not work correctly on later PC versions of Sonic R. That all is working correctly now, so the game looks the way it was supposed to, which is very nice. Uh, here's a fun little bonus one, Sonic Extreme. Obviously, this game never came out, but there have been a number of fan efforts to recreate the Sonic Extreme experience. And, uh, the Unity remake here is, in my opinion, the best one for getting to play something that resembles what Sonic Extreme might have been. Uh, it's only four levels, but it's a cool little, uh, curio to check out if you've always wanted to get your hands on Sonic Extreme. This is some kind of facsimile of it that feels pretty authentic. Uh, for Sonic Advance 2, there is a ROM hack available that reduces the amount of SP rings required to access a special stage to, I think, just three instead of all seven in a level. Which is very nice, because it makes it possible to access the special stages, as that is something that I think 99% of human beings on planet Earth have never done in Sonic Advance 2. Now on to the Sonic Riders games, and there is a lot to talk about here. Lots of cool stuff going on in the world of Sonic Riders. First of all, of course, we have the original Sonic Riders, which has two fantastic versions of it available. Sonic Riders DX and Sonic Riders Tournament Edition. Both of these mods are fairly similar to each other, as they were originally one mod that eventually split into two different projects, and they're both excellent. I'd recommend checking out both of these and uh, maybe seeing which one you prefer. I like both of them, personally. Each one has cool things available in that version that the other version doesn't have, so I like to kind of go back and forth. Uh, but these are really big overhauls for Sonic Riders, with the primary goal of turning it into a more serious, competitive game which really just means the game is better now, with tons of rebalances, tons of changes to lots of gears and stuff. All the characters have been made unique with the addition of subclasses beyond just speed, flight, and power. Some of the courses have even been modified to make them a little bit more balanced for each of the different types. New mechanics have been added to the game to add some extra depth and make it even faster and way more fun. There are extra playable characters available in both versions, which is really cool. Uh, extra skins, new music, some levels have been retextured to give them a fresh look. Uh, yeah, both of these are fantastic versions of Sonic Riders. They are so cool. Once you've played either of these, you can never go back to vanilla Sonic Riders. It just feels so worse in comparison. And the same is true for Sonic Riders Regravitified, a mod by the same people who made Sonic Riders DX for Zero Gravity. And this one really overhauls Zero Gravity to make it a lot more similar to the original Riders and way better and way more fun. A lot of the mechanics from the original Riders that were removed in Zero Gravity have been re-implemented. Boosting, drifting, character types, as well as a bunch of other additions and rebalances and everything. Very similar project to the ones available for the first Riders. It's not as robust or game-changing. But the couple of changes that it does make are so much more impactful because Zero Gravity is nowhere near as good as the original Riders. This takes it from a game that I don't really want to play to a solid Sonic Riders game. So definitely check out Regravitified. And you know what? Even Free Riders has its own cool thing available. The No Connect patch making the game playable on a normal controller. Oh my goodness, I never would have imagined something like that would happen, but the Sonic community is just amazing. For so many people, this was their first opportunity ever to get to play Free Riders, and it's not bad. It's not the best Sonic Riders game by far, but getting to play it alone is really cool, and I would say it's good enough that it's worth checking out, especially for Sonic Riders fans. 
I tell you, dude, it's stuff like this. This is what makes me love the Sonic community. People that make awesome projects like this and all the awesome stuff I've shown off so far in this video. But we're not done yet. We got a couple more quick things I want to cover. There are the Wii Sonic games, Secret Rings, Black Knight, and the Wii version of Sonic Unleashed. There's not really a whole lot available for these games. Just play them on Dolphin for, you know, enhanced resolution and frame rate and everything. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention about Secret Rings and Black Knight in particular is that through emulation, you can remove motion controls from these games and just play them normally with a regular controller, which is very nice. Uh, Black Knight can be a little finicky to configure it correctly, so that way sword swinging works on a button press, but I got you covered. I already went through the process of uh, figuring out a control scheme that works very consistently, so uh, check that out in the spreadsheet and uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about Sonic Runners Revival, a fan project to continue development on Sonic Runners, the old Sonic team made uh, mobile auto runner, uh, which I never played. I missed the original game and I haven't checked out Revival yet for myself. But uh, at this point, this is the only way you can play Sonic Runners anymore. And it seems like a very cool project. It's uh, added more characters and a whole bunch of extra stuff to the game. So uh, yeah, if you want to play Sonic Runners, check it out. And that is it. That is everything. All the best ways to play all the Sonic games. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if something wasn't mentioned here, it's because there's no real enhancements available for the game. Uh, it's worth mentioning that some of these games can be a real pain in the ass to unlock certain things like uh, Unleashed. Do you really want to play the Werehog levels? Probably not. Uh, so for a number of games, I've also included save files if you just want to get to the good stuff and you don't want to grind or put up with whatever stupid crap might be available in this Sonic game or that. I've also got links to a bunch of my recommended emulators if you want to check out any of the games through emulation and everything. Uh, yeah, thanks for sticking it out through this video if you did. There's a lot of work putting all this together, took a lot of time, took years of me just following the Sonic community and seeing all these amazing things come out over time. It is so awesome, dude, and I know as time goes on, even more awesome things are going to be made and going to become available. This is an updated version of a video that I made a while ago, and I'm probably going to have to make another updated version of it again at some point in the future, because there's just always amazing things coming out of the Sonic community. Please do check out that spreadsheet, and if you like it, spread it around and uh, let people know about it. I want that to be as helpful as possible for the Sonic community as it can be. Thanks to all the people responsible for all these incredible projects. All the modders, the people behind the decompilations, the fan remakes, everything. All the resources that have been accumulated over the many years by so many Sonic fans putting everything together. This is why I say the Sonic community is the best, man, because there's just no other series that has this level of fan support put behind it. It is the best. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did and you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon and coffee in the description. I'll see you next time.